Compliance audits can be arduous, painstaking, time-consuming tasks. Let's see how policy controller simplified Oma's job enough for her to leave work before dinner time on an audit day. It's audit day, and as people responsible for performing audits know, this is a time every month when Oma feels overwhelmed because she needs to review whether the entire company's infrastructure is compliant. This typically involves many hours of reviewing configurations, meetings with team leads, and analyzing running infrastructure to make sure everything is compliant. A lot of the time spent tracking down potential problems would disappear if there is a way to automatically enforce correct policy instead of having to track down possible compliance issues. It would be better to have a system that stopped them from occurring in the first place. Omer heard a lot about the new tools that Charlie's team introduced and is wondering if those tools can possibly help them. After hearing their issues, Charlie explains policy controller and how it can not only ensure compliance, but also enable audit logging of violations that were uncovered when policies were introduced. Oma is intrigued to say the least. Policy controller is a Kubernetes dynamic admission controller that checks, audits, and enforces your cluster compliance with policies related to security, regulations, or arbitrary business rules. Policy controller enforces cluster compliance with policies called constraints. Constraints are a powerful feature that allow for fine-grained control over a cluster. For example, you can enforce many of the same requirements as pod security policies, but with the added ability to audit your configurations before enforcing it. You can limit the type of volumes that can be mounted to pods, or even control the repository a given container image can be pulled from, and more. Along with constraints, Policy Controller also introduces constraint templates. These allow you to define how a constraint works, but delegate defining the specifics of the constraints to an individual or group with subject matter expertise. In addition to separating concerns, this also separates the logic of the constraints from its definition. So for example, if you have a family of applications that will have to use a limited range of ports, you can define a template like this to limit the range, but define that range with a constraint at implementation time. Oma's team decides to start requiring labels on namespace that specify who the namespace owner is. This is a good use of the K8 required labels constraint. In order to start using policy controller to add a required label, Oma first creates a corresponding constraint with the dry run mode set. This allows Oma to monitor all of the violations without causing downtime. Once this constraint is applied to the cluster, Oma can view the audit by looking at the constraint object logs. She now has a list of teams and services to talk to. After they fix the issues, she removes the enforcement action, which means the default enforcement actions deny takes effect to even stop further policy violations from occurring. In the past, she used to have to follow up with teams individually to retroactively track down and fix policy violations. Now with Policy Controller, Oma has a list of violations and a way to block them from occurring. Policy Controller using a familiar GitOps approach to enable policy rules for existing configs and logs violations that do occur once enabled. And best of all, because of Policy Controller, Oma got to be home before dinner on an audit day for the first time ever. So that's it for Policy Controller. Make sure to check out the description for links to more resources on it. And like and subscribe to the channel for more videos about Google Cloud. Thanks for watching.